Most of us have fallen in love and we know that crazy, wonderful feeling of falling in love. And although you see movies, you read books about falling in love and just how wonderful it is, falling in love is not the kind of love that actually helps you stay healthier. Researchers have been following a long-term study since 1930 with couples and they have a large number of couples. And the one correlation they found with longevity of these couples was not falling in love, but the ability to stay in love, the ability to choose that person every day. Being in love, they call it a companionate type love, this kind of love was healthier, healthier across the boards with predicting who would live the longest. Stopping smoking was a big deal. What you ate was a big deal. Getting exercise was a big deal, but none of them matched the ability to have a long-term companionate love. Now, if you're in a relationship and you're wondering, gosh, do I have this? I have four, four symbolic markers of companionate love, but mostly what I want you to hear with this video is that it was the individual partner's choice to choose to love this person every day. In other words, these couples were not perfect and they did not expect perfection from each other, but they did expect honesty. They did expect openness and honesty. And because of the other factors involved with this companionate love, these couples have, were not only survivors, but they thrived in their life together. A study since 1930 is nothing that you can just, you know, say, well, it's for other people, it's not for me. This is significant. And I, let's watch this and listen to this now. The first of these, the, the relationship was rooted in friendship. In other words, these couples were not so much glued to each other during the day. They didn't have to have the same interests, the same lifestyle, anything. But what they did have was they had a significant friendship, a best friendship, if you will. This, the researchers asked these couples what, you know, what they liked to do. And there was a whole list of different things between different partners. But the one significant thing that stood out is they enjoyed, they enjoyed it more because they shared it with their partner or they shared their life with their partner. That was in every one of the questionnaires. Secondly, a genuine stable affection. These couples wanted to be together. They wanted to sleep together. They wanted to be near each other. Doesn't mean they necessarily were having sex all the time. It means they chose to be together. They liked the feel of each other. They liked hugging each other. They liked holding hands together. When one was gone, the other could feel the presence of that emptiness. They had a genuine bond of affection. Thirdly, they were really good at showing each other attention. When they were in a crowd, they would find their partner eye contact and continue to look at their partner. No matter where they were, their eyes knew where their partner was and would look at them. When the one person was talking to other people, they would still glance at their wife. They were really, or their husband, they were really good at giving total attention. And it wasn't just one time, it was steady across the board, across their lives, which means that person to them was a priority, was significant. And lastly, honesty and openness. They were in fact very transparent with each other. They did not, they did not exclude, exude feelings of trust or insecurity issues because they trusted fully their partner. In other words, these couples, they were okay like when they asked them about part of mistakes their partner made or mess ups. The couples were very good at acknowledging that and saying, yeah, they screw that up all the time or they mess that up all the time. They were accepting of imperfections. They were not accepting of any dishonesty. And there seemed to be less dishonesty in these groups because they knew they could be totally honest and open with their partner. 
If you're in a relationship and you really want it to last forever and you want it to feel good forever and you want to enjoy the relationship, I would strongly encourage you to start adapting these one or two or all of these four significant milestones because I think what this could do for you is put your relationship in a category that it would go the miles. The number one thing you have to do is you have to choose to love the person, no matter what comes up. Because let's face it, if you're together for a while, there's gonna be days you don't like your partner. You wanna be alone, you don't wanna be with them. Always choose to do at least one small thing for that partner every day to show them they are significant to you. And you can, you can develop this. I think it's so optimistic and so hopeful. And I hope you and your partner will listen to this time and time again.